And we are live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to TTSN, the transformational squirrel network where we make shift happen. I want to know, everybody, do you have emotions or beliefs that are blocking your happiness? Because if you have, we have the perfect guest on tonight for you. Jody King Colgrove helps frazzled moms get their health and happiness back. And Jody has a technique that she's discovered to help you move forward in your life and achieve your dreams. Welcome, Jody. We're so excited to have you here to share with our listeners. We want to know how you got to this point in your life and, and the things that you're doing. And we want to learn about this technique that you've discovered. What can you share with us? Great. Well, I appreciate you having me on. It's so fun to actually meet you and talk to you after I've seen you and um, just really enjoy your work. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, you know, I think through everything, we always kind of get into a healing modality by something that we've gone through. <laughs> so, <laughs> <That's> and, um, <laughs> that kind of drives us to where we're, where we end up. And it's hard when we go through the valleys and the difficulty, but we realize on the other end, wow, I really learned something. And so you want to turn around and say, hey, if you have that same issue, you know, come along with me. Um, and so I think that's kind of, you know, what I've experienced. Um, and it was, you know, I had several different things. You know, I had an issue in college um, that was probably my defining moment. And um, it's a simple story, but I, I might as well just kind of say so. I um, got to college and it was a college where they really believed in having a lot of healthy food. So everything was vegan. And so, um, but they had a lot of alternative meat. And so there was a lot of um, soy products and things like that. And it was just about 92, you know, or in the nineties where they started adding, you know, more issues with soy and glycosate and things like that. And I started not being able to digest the food very well. Uh, and my kidneys and things like that. And so I would basically be doubled over, you know, in the dorm room and I couldn't go out with friends. I couldn't date. Um, I just couldn't figure out, you know, what in the world's wrong with me? I've never had this before. So I went and visited a doctor and the doctor kind of looked at me, checked me out and said, you know, I think you're swallowing too much air when you eat. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that didn't sit with me <laughs> very well I didn't like that answer um and luckily my father was building a home for an herbologist and so he I guess told her what the issue was and she said hey come to me I'll show you how to muscle test different herbs to find out what's happening in the body and so sure enough she gave me a food enzyme and a digestive which is hydrochloric acid and I got my life back. I could go on dates. I could go have fun. Uh, and it was like that yeah. profound shift. And so ever since then, I've been going down the, hmm, that's, I want to know something, you know, how our bodies work and why they work and what makes them function better. And that just kind of continued to propel itself. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. You know, when you get into those situations and you find out there's more out there, then absolutely, you want to share what you know and what you've learned with others, right? Yeah, I mean, just from what a gift at such a young age. Yeah, I mean, just the right. idea that you know, I would go to the store and buy Tums, and I found out, wait a second, Tums is suppressing the hydrochloric acid so that I'm actually propelling the issue. And I, I like, did, I wanted to kind of scream that to everybody, no, no, don't do that, you need to do this <laughs> instead. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely, yes. And that's exactly what happens. You know, that is what everybody goes to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's causing the problem that it's actually supposed to be fixing. It's yeah. actually making the problem worse. Yeah. Then they add, you know, calcium to it to make it better. It's like, no, no, your body can't even do anything with that. So that's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Amazing yeah. stuff. Mm hmm. Right. And so you're also, uh, we're talking about stress and anxiety and trauma, what they do to the body. Do you want to speak a little bit into that? Yeah, you know, um, I 
you know, like you said, entered this by that experience. And so I didn't have as much um, like issue with trauma and stuff like that. I've kind of, you know, somehow my parents kind of helped me through, you know, life's bumps and stuff like that. But when I broke my leg skiing, that was the first thing I turned to is like, oh yeah, I have this thing in my toolkit. I've been known forever. And so I sat on a ski slope, you know, waiting for someone mm-hmm. to show up and started releasing this trauma treatment. And, you know, and I used all my modalities that I have um, through this quantum techniques. And I really didn't have much pain during, you know, having a, um, a broken leg and repairing it and getting back on my feet. Um, but I, so I kind of, um, massaged this enough and found information that really helped me understand trauma. And, and you realize trauma is a big word. And sometimes we say, well, I don't, I don't have trauma. You know, you know, maybe I had some, you know, issues in as my childhood with parents or, you know, things like that. And, and some can be bigger, you know, with sexuality issues. And those are trauma. Or we think of trauma and we think of that big word. But we don't realize that there's little things that kind of create trauma. You know, getting a speeding ticket. Um, you know, being in a car wreck, uh, maybe having to go to the hospital um, and, you know, having to get a test that you're nervous about. And so all those things can be stress, anxiety that can be considered trauma and you don't realize how much your body holds on to that. And so you can expand trauma to be very deep. And so I think this works on anybody. In fact, when um, I was at a after college, I uh, did, you know, real estate and things like that. And so I would actually put this treatment by my phone. I actually did property management. And so uh, when you do property management, you get a lot of bad calls. I'm like, my ear didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> my roof is leaking. Uh, and so I would, you know, I'd answer the phone and sure enough, is I have somebody angry and yelling at me on the phone. And so I'd release this treatment to me and to them and we'd be able to have a better conversation. So it, it works on just so many levels. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. And you know, you're right, like trauma is such, people think that post traumatic stress disorder is just from like major, major traumatic experiences, but it's truly not. Mm -hmm. It can be if you've been, if you have been even shocked by something, you can have a traumatic event from that or post traumatic stress from that, or if you've been injured or whatever it might be people don't realize that it doesn't have to be a major event for your body to hold on to that, right? That it can be something a lot smaller. And that unless you allow that um, event to be processed by your body and, and know how to get rid of the emotions and the frequencies and the energy that goes with that, it remains there and can be a be affecting your life it can show up at the most inopportune times yeah another interesting part of that i found was when two people you know two people could be in the same vehicle in an accident and have the exact same experience and one can walk away with no issue and the other could be completely post-trauma stress Mm -hmm. disorder right just i find that fascinating how we all react to experiences differently, right? Yeah, you process things differently. You yeah. see things differently. You hear things right. differently. Perceive it mm-hmm. completely different from each other, right? Well, you think about this whole last year we've been in, you know, and everybody yeah. has a different perspective and how they've processed it and where they've come to the table with the skills or no skills to deal with that. And, and the age, you know, I think is, just, you know, like, young kids that maybe not have had the experience of going through something like that they're like well what do i do with this you know and so yeah it, i really like what you had to say because that is so true yeah. yeah and victoria here is saying especially when you have trauma stacked and layered one on top of the yeah. other two right cumulative yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely but yeah. i want to read a statement that i thought was interesting because it, it really does kind of sum up a little bit what we're saying and then why this particular modality that I do um, helps with that. So um, it says that stress, anxiety, and trauma create a physical and a non-physical response. Trauma can overwhelm the nervous system and its capacity to process the experience. Mm -hmm. But pieces of that experience are left unprocessed, 
frozen behind in your body and also your brain. So anytime a flow of energy goes through those areas, the person will experience that trauma symptom again. Yeah. And so a lot of times they give an example of like somebody that's been driving on a road where they had a car accident. And so as they come on the scene, they kind of, oh yeah, that's where it was. And, you know, and so they, they are almost like re-experiencing it. Yes. Um, right. Yeah. And so um, that's how our body's kind of like reliving it. And I think what's interesting is if we don't process those, then, it, you know, a lot of time it's almost like keeping a ball underneath the water and you're trying to suppress it. And there's yeah. something about, and I, I know it happens with men and women, but I think it starts popping out and you literally can't hold it anymore. And so that's why you manifest sometimes disease in the body yeah. because it will, it has to get out. It wants to process. It wants you to move on to what your need to learn from it. Mm -hmm. And if we keep suppressing it, it just, it causes disease. It's so right. true. And disease or physical illness, mm -hmm. right? That, that you don't, you don't know where it came from, but there it is, right? Yeah. Back injuries, leg injuries, and they just pop up, right? When yeah. we're willing to deal with it, then we can become more real resilient human beings because like I said, then we have a better mindset to know how to go through it the next time or to, like I said, to reach back and say, okay, this is how you do with this with the next generation. That's right, yeah. And you know, because there are more of us that are so aware of, of these things and are sharing them with others now, I'm hoping that, the next generation is going to have more of that knowledge and can share that with other people as well. You know, that we're actually, we're actually growing a, a generation that will know more and will do better with what they know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you share with us, Jody, um, some techniques that you use for clearing stress, anxiety, um, trauma from your body, like, um, I know you were talking a little bit about EFT earlier. And so is there some things that you're willing to share with our audience? Yeah. And so this is the technique and um, I can see you guys. And so I'll kind of have, I'll just kind of walk you through it and, and you can give your experience and the people that are listening can also walk through it too um, and be aware of what they notice. So I want each of you to kind of think of a situation that you've been in that is traumatic and it like you said it could be anything from a car accident to a test to a phone call to an altercation you had with somebody you know whatever that is um but think about it and be aware of like how it makes your body feel you know maybe what your thoughts are you know sometimes people feel it in their chest or they feel their stomach sometimes in the shoulders you know you're holding your shoulders up sometimes it's a headache because you, you know it just hurts so wherever that is in your body just kind of be aware of that and I always say, give it a, on a scale from one to 10, you know, how intense is that feeling when you think about the situation, what was said, how you dealt with it, how maybe escalated, all that kind of stuff. So give it a, a number from one to 10. And I would like you to know, or like you to say um, what that is. And so I've, I've got my thing that I actually had to deal with today. Um, and so I'm thinking of that. Um, so, um, Tamara, what would you say that your number is? My number would be about a seven, I think. Okay. And Cindy, what about you? I'd say an eight. Okay. So seven and eight. And mine is a six. Um, so, all right. So we're thinking about that. And then what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to run you through some acupressure points um, that are both synonymous with quantum techniques at, which is a modality I do, and then also EFT. So if you're familiar with those, they're gonna be about the same. So, so first you're gonna start and touch your eyebrow. Um, let's see, let me see if I can, <laughs> I'm gonna prop this up, it's a little hard, I have to look down it. So then we're gonna do the index finger. Then we're gonna touch the little finger. Then we're gonna touch the side of hand. And then start at the eyebrow. Then we're gonna do under the eye. Then we're gonna do middle finger, side of the hand, going back to the index finger, then outside of the eye, and then under the arm, and 
and collarbone. Okay, and I'm going to run that through again. And like I said, you can do it on either side, so it doesn't matter what um, side you're touching on. So eyebrow, index finger, little finger, side of hand, start of the eyebrow, under the eye, the middle finger, side of the hand, index finger, outside the eye, the armpit, and the collarbone. So I just want to take a deep breath. And I just want you to check in and kind of see, okay, where are you with that situation and how you're feeling your body? And again, rate it and kind of see where you're at. Yeah, I would say probably a five now. Mm -hmm. What about yeah. five? Also? Probably uh, five. Okay, All right. All right. So let's run through it again because we want to kind of bring it, continue to bring it down. Um, so just be aware that sometimes there's a different aspect you're thinking of. So I'm going to think about the um, the car accident scenario. So a lot of times, you know, you'll think about um, the way the car felt as it, you know, hit or something like that. But then we think about, oh, I remember how it sounded. I remember the crunch and, and how that made me feel or I felt the sliding where I couldn't control. And so be aware that if you were thinking about the situation, how maybe the aspect of it has changed a little bit. Okay, so then we'll run through it again. So eyebrow, index finger, little finger, side of hand, the eyebrow, the under the eye, the middle finger, side of hand, index finger, outside of eye, and then under the arm, and collarbone. I'll go through one more time. So the eyebrow, the index finger, the little finger, the side of the hand, the eyebrow, under the eye, the middle finger, side of the hand, index finger, outside of eye, armpit, and collarbone. And again, just take a deep breath. And then just check in again and kind of see where you're at on a scale. Say, yeah, I would say with three, it's definitely gone down more. Mm -hmm. What about you, Cindy? Probably a three as well. Yeah. And so a lot of times you can continue to kind of move through this if you want to go down more. Sometimes there's a little bit, like sometimes things can get a little bit stuck. Like I talked about thinking about a different aspect. Mm -hmm. So Tamara, is there some little aspect that's maybe still holding on? Maybe it's an auditory or a visual or a feeling? Yeah, it certainly could be. I'm not positive what exactly it would be, but the visual mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so what about you, Cindy? Uh, I would say more of a feeling, like just a, a stuck emotion, maybe. Okay. All right. So just so I'm just kind of thinking about you know thinking about you, um, Cindy, kind of concentrating your heart, and then Tamara, just think about maybe you know the eyes. And so let's go ahead and kind of run through that one more time. So the eyebrow the index finger, the little finger, side of hand, the eyebrow, under the eye, the middle finger, side of hand, the index finger, outside of eye, armpit, and collarbone. I'm just gonna run through it one more time. So eyebrow, index finger, little finger, side of hand, start of the eyebrow, under the eye, middle finger, side of hand, index finger, out, sorry, outside of the eye, <laughs> under the uh, armpit, and collarbone. All right. So again, just take a nice deep breath. 
And then just checking in, where would you say you are? Hmm. Okay, one. Yeah. So that's really the technique and just kind of being able to bring that down. And it's it's funny because I, I have to follow the the technique. We have it on the back of our, our business card, you know, and so all little points. And what we found is, okay, I've already entered that like a million times. So I literally, when I have a situation, I can run my finger down and go like this and it releases the same thing I just did. Yeah. Now, a lot of times I don't have this piece of card, but I can think about these points and then just run my finger down the side of my you know, arm or my leg as I'm dealing with whatever situation. And it helps reduce the, the feelings. Wow. So can you explain to our audience, like, um, I'm not sure if they know about EFT and, you know, the meridians and, and what we're actually doing there. Um, just to make more sense um, as to what the technique is doing. So well, yeah, what I what I say in layman's terms, what I tell people is I do um, verbal acupressure. <laughs> <laughs> so those places are actual or at are acupressure points or meridian points that represent different organs in the body. Now I don't have it memorized, but there's each of those areas represent a different organ. I think like under the eye, maybe stomach, or I have it written on my phone. I should memorize those. But um, so each place that you're touching, obviously this is a, like lymphatic uh, when you touch the collarbone. Um, so each one of those are representing the organs or places or meridian points that represent organs that they found that when you tap on those, that you the vibration helps clear whatever um, is stuck there. So that's why I read at the very beginning that you can have those physical pieces of that energy stuck there. Mm -hmm. And so you're being able to break that up. Um, so that's kind of what the tapping is <clears throat> that helps people. Yeah. Very, very ah. neat. That's better. <laughs> oh yeah. There was a, a noise in the background that that stopped. Stopped. Um, yeah, you know, I, I know Cindy and I have both uh, worked a little bit with EFT and really found that it does make a difference for us. And boy, it's something that really helps to ground and calm you in in many different situations for sure. But this is a different. This is a little bit different. Yeah, a little different twist to it. Yeah. yeah, my um, my mentor, which was Steve Daniels, um, he took the original one of the original class from Roger Callahan with Gary Craig, and there was five of them in the class. And so Gary Craig took the information and made it into EFT, and my um, mentor made it into quantum techniques. And like I said, a lot of times they use the same points. Mm -hmm. Gary uses that because um, I have my EFT certification too from from Gary. Um, but what he's doing is he's a lot of times using, you know, you know, I, I got to quit smoking or I, you know, feel like a failure. And so you're tapping on the point points to get that feeling to release. Mm -hmm. What we do um, is we come up with a specific code for your specific issue. And we're usually addressing your toxins. Um, and pathogens that you like what the disease is in the body and why it's manifesting itself and finding out what are the toxins like mold or inhalants or injectants or something you're eating mm. or the pathogens like virus bacteria or mold that are blocking those meridians or those organs from working and then we give you a specific tapping code or that you would read that mm. clears that out of that out of your body wow nice. interesting yeah. Jennifer is saying my left thumb joint is super itchy after that release question mark question mark question mark. <laughs> and, and which thumb is it which it thumb is left. Left. oh left yes okay. all right so I'm going to do uh and what her name is Jennifer okay so Jennifer I want you to think about that thumb I'm going to do just a, like a, a deeper level of something that we kind of do so we're thinking about that being a little bit itchy so I'm going to do the side of hand under nose side of hand, and I'm going to put your back body back into parasympathetic recovery. So it's not an overdrive, it's back into calmness. 
Then what I'm going to do, and I have to slow down because I do this so fast. So then I'm going to put on these brain engines, which is all these different points in the body. Like I said, we, we kind of look like we've got Tourette syndrome when we're working with people because we're touching all these points to clear. Um, so I'm just tapping both my ears and then I'm clearing lock and key, everything that's in that thumb with all spiritual attachment, just so that it's whatever emotion or trauma or issues that you have there, we're clearing. And again, I'm just running my finger over the trauma code, which is what we just did to release that. Okay. So a lot of times then I'll, I'll use muscle testing and say, okay, thinking about that muscle is still test reversed. Okay. So then I would ask, okay, why is it? It's an internal physical. Okay, and then I can just tell that you've had some kind of an injectant there, okay? So there's a bite or a sting that's in that joint. A lot of times joints and stuff like that will hold on to venoms and things like that. And I happen to live at the moment in Louisiana and we get bit a lot here. So I've really learned how to you know, test injectants a lot. And so if we think about that, we have one injectant. It's also got venom, trauma, and it's also got pollen there. So it must be something maybe kind of recent or it could be a recurring um, from before. So there's something else. So I call that a combination field. So I'm just thinking about releasing that combination from that area, okay? And so then I'm just gonna, again, just run through those points real quick. This is how quickly I do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I do it slowly the first time. So. so Jennifer, let me know how that is. Cause now I test that that area is not reversed. So Jennifer, if you can comment and then we can, yeah. I can let Jody know how that, how that went for you. Sometimes it takes a minute for, for yeah. our comments to show up. So, so it is really cool that you can clear things via distance. And she says the itch has released. So very, very. <laughs> And, and I think that sometimes people don't realize how, because it's energy, it can be released via distance yeah. and we're all connected, you know? And so I think sometimes people, people don't understand that until uh, they've experienced it. She says, the burning is gone. Thank you. Great. So. You know, a lot of times I say, I come from a quite religious background. And so um, what I say is, you know, when you're going to pray for your aunt or your grandma that's suffering of something, you know, you think of her and you say, you know, God bless her, help her to feel better, you know, and we're kind of doing the same thing. We're saying, yeah, okay, yeah. you know, Jennifer, you got this thing, you know, let's let that go away, you know, and, and we're doing it from a loving perspective. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's how I kind of explain it to people. And, yeah. and I always say the first healing was in the body when the uh, centurion came to Jesus and said, you know, I need you to heal my servant. And he said, okay, yeah, I'll go do it. Oh, no, no, you don't have to come. Just say the word and it will be done. And it shall be healed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because my background, um, I, I teach in a Catholic school and I was doing some crystal healing and some uh, sound bowls and, you know, using those kinds of things. And I was concerned because I teach in a Catholic school and I wasn't sure if that was going to be okay. And so I went to the priest and he said, as long as you are doing it with love and your intentions are purely to support the other person, you don't have anything to worry about. And that's what it is, right? That's what it's all about is the energy that you are giving out is to help other people. Then it can't be bad or wrong, right? Yeah, no, definitely. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, that is truly, I, I mean, you said it great. I can't say it any better than that. That is so true. Like every one of my clients, I'm holding space for them. Yeah to have a loving place where they can go and be supportive. And yeah. it's funny that, you know, when I'm working with people all over the world on the phone and they, you know, we call, we do a session, sometimes they haven't had a space where they can heal. And so when they get on the phone, I start yawning because I am working in clearing their body and that inner, that 
oxygen is going into their body to clear it. So I will yawn is almost like a reflection of what their right. body's releasing. Um, and right. it's so funny because I'll be fine and then I'll get on the phone. I'm like yawning, yawning, yawning. <laughs> but it really is. It's like that, th that safe place for them to go, okay, I can, I can. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I noticed that on, I, on my healing table when I have um, anybody on there, you know, something that's going on in their body, I'm feeling in mine or releasing different uh, things, you know, that are going on for them. Yeah. And it's, it's truly amazing what you feel and, and what comes up, right? When you're holding space for someone, it's, it's truly beautiful. It really it is. is. It truly is. Yeah. You know, another thing I kind of cover with um, people that are healers or kind of anything is we sometimes take on our other people's energy, you know, just like, we, you know, we do reflect it. So we need to have a good practice to create good boundaries. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we have a great thing that's called an energy shield. And it's almost like a Spider-Man suit where you kind of put that on every day and, you know, make sure to say, okay, I'm going to give away just enough energy to help others, but I'm not going to take on anybody else's to let me impact my energy. So that's something that, you know, I love to give out to people to help them be able to uh, live more balanced just every day. Mm -hmm. nice. Absolutely. Yeah. We have another question here um, from Bonnie. She says, hello and love to all of you. Is there an EFT for bowel obstruction? Good to see you, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes and no. In other words, like I said, we come up with every different code is specific for that person. Now we do have some generic codes for like viruses and bacterias, injectants, inhalants, contactants, that kind of thing. But a lot of times what we do is we just muscle test. Okay, well, what, where is the bowel obstruction and why is it there? Um, and I, like I said, I, I deal with digestion a lot. And so, um, you know, testing to find out, well, is it in the large intestine, the small intestine? Is it in the mucosal lining, maybe the microbiome? Um, is the intrinsic nervous system that kind of moves the poop through, is that being uh, shut off? And just a note that usually gets shut off because of injectants, another thing. Right. <laughs> um, there's also um, intrinsic nervous system, which move, moves that through in the peristalsis. Like, it's kind of like two different things. And then we've also found that there's something called a poop switch, which, you know, is kind of alerts the brain, hey, I need to go now. And sometimes that can get knocked off by different foods, injectants that kind of thing. So we would find out where is it in that? And let's say even uh, like my husband had something the other day where it's like, okay, it was really actually, I tested what part of the large intestine is it ascending a, a transverse or is it descending without, okay, it's really the descending colon that had the issue. And so we can get real specific. I even for, I think for my son one time said, okay, if there's 25 feet, where is it in that small intestine that we have the issue? And I, I found, you know, what it was and ask the body to clear whatever irregular cells or DNA damage was at that point. So yeah, sometimes we need to get real specific and other times we can just say, hey, the whole thing, you know, clear out whatever thing it's dealing with, whether it's an ingestion or um, some kind of injected. So I guess it's kind of basically everybody is individual and whatever's happening in their body is, you know, kind of what you're getting at with the, you know, the EFT it depends on what's happening for her, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I can always say that you can, you know, read the trauma code to relax the area and your stress about that area. So that's always, you know, helpful and to send it blessings and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always helpful. Um, but yeah, we, um, we find it's really helpful to kind of find out exactly what it is. And I always call myself like a detective because everybody's body is different. So I'm going in and finding out exactly what it is. And and it's fascinating. I mean, I worked for somebody today. I had no idea what I'd find. And, and even the other day, I was, somebody said, well, there's something that happened six years ago. And it's really pressing on your heart. And she said, oh, my mom died six years ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know the timing, you know, and just, I just, to me, that's just, oh, thank you, God, that I'm able to help someone put the pieces together so that they can heal mm -hmm. and let go of whatever has been stuck there. Right. And that's so, it's so what it is, right? It's putting those pieces together and coming up with the things that you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even think about on your own, you know, mm -hmm. when there's somebody else there reading your energy, 
that can help support you. Mm -hmm. It's such a blessing. Yeah. So I think um, a lot of people, another subject I would like to touch on while we have you here um, that I know a lot of people struggle with is sleep and, you know, chronic, chronic illnesses, I guess, basically as well. Is there, can you touch a bit on that and maybe something that our audience could um, implement right away for sleeping or? Yeah, for sleeping, um, we look at the Chinese calendar a lot and we say, okay, what is it about your sleep? So there's two, the first question you asked is when I lay down, am I just anxious? And so I can't get to sleep. So that's one issue. The other one is that, yeah, I can go to sleep, but then I wake up and I can't get back to sleep. So one can, the first one is anxiety or it can deal with blood sugar issues. The second one, depending on when you wake up during the night can indicate what body organ is having an issue. So if you wake up between one and three, your liver is trying to do the detoxing and it's got overworked. And so it wakes you up because it can't get out of the detox because it's like, then it starts coming, you know, out of, you know, got pee, <laughs> so your, yeah. your kidneys are an issue and then maybe you can't breathe, you know, so yeah, lymphatic system. If you wake up between three and five, that's your lungs. And so you may be dealing with grief issues um, and so that's an impact. So we kind of look at, okay, what time? If you want to go back the other direction between 11 and one is gallbladder. And so there too, is like a, a detoxing organ that may be impacted, or you may have gallstones that uh, we have a really simple protocol for doing that one. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what we're looking at to find out, okay, what is the time frame it's impacting you on that? So those are kind of two ways that we kind of diagnose and help find out what, where to go from there. And then we can work on codes that we have um, to detox the liver and to clear out what toxins are bothering you. And a lot of times it's, you know, sheets, you know, is the, the, the um, laundry detergent and the dryer sheets that you're using, are they toxic? And so your body just can't get out of that. And so, you know, you're sleeping on that night. And so it's just overwhelmed. So um, that's one of the simple things you can do is change your laundry detergent. That helps not only with sleep, helps with digestion, and it also helps with anxiety because uh, a lot of times uh, people have panic attacks in the laundry aisle at the grocery store. Yeah. And you know, we just, we talked about that a few weeks back with Wendy and we were talking about, you know, making sure that your laundry soap and that your bounce, you're not using bounce sheets, that you're using something natural in your laundry because it makes such a difference for you. And if you have any kind of breathing issues, you know, that, that can really exacerbate them. So that's huge. You know, we're hearing that from two experts within a matter of a month. So, yeah. so if you haven't heard it clearly, <laughs> we could probably tell you again. <laughs> yeah, I always um, find that I give people an illustration. I said, you know, every day your body wakes up and it has a certain amount of energy. It's like, great, we're going to face the day and I've got all this energy. And then you put on the clothes with the toxins on it and it goes, okay, I have just enough energy to deal with all that toxins. Why don't you go take care of your immune system? Cause I don't have time for that. Yeah. Well, you've just knocked off your immune system. And so now you're going to get and be vulnerable to, you know, viruses and bacteria. So. Right. Speaking of which, can you talk a little bit about autoimmunity? I know that's like the epidemic of our world right, right now is autoimmunity diseases. So love to hear what you have to say about that. Sure. Um, so yeah, so autoimmunity is kind of a catch-all phrase that a lot of doctors use and they give a lot of subcategories like, you know, lupus or um, Hashimoto. Fibromyalgia. Yeah, fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. And um, all that is just because they go, you know, I'm not really sure if so I'm going to stick it in a category. <laughs> And so um, what we do is, again, we're finding out muscle testing, okay, what are your symptoms and why, why do you have this? So I always like to say, okay, what is the terrain change that caused you to have this shift to being ill? So is, was it an external physical? Was it an internal physical? 
Was it an internal, sorry, go back. Is it external physical? Is it an external non-physical? Is it an internal physical and an internal non-physical? So external physical, we're back to our dryer sheets again, <laughs> laundry detergent, you know, or it could be molds, you know, what, what's in your office environment, your car environment, your home environment. Um, internal, non, or external, sorry, external, non-physical are, are there people in your life that are impacting you with your energy? And so you're, like you said, with that energy shield, you're just not able to push it away so is it impacting you? So people that have Lyme's disease, they typically do not have good boundaries. And so they're taking on other people's issues and that reduces their immune system and makes them more vulnerable. So an internal physical issues are going to be things like, you know, is there viruses and bacteria that have never left? Is there anesthesias? I mean, that's the one biggest thing I'm finding these days is anesthesias do their job but then they sometimes get stuck. And sometimes if you have dental work, they can get stuck in this cranial nerve number 12 and make you snore. And so I work a lot with snoring and ap sleep apnea to clear the, all the phrenic nerve and the diaphragm esophagus and to clear all that so that it can breathe in the trachea. Um, the, you can also get, um, you know, viruses and bacteria in, you know, the tissue, like we talked about with the joint, sometimes that can, you know, add to that. It can, and sometimes they reflect different. In other words, it may be, you know, the issue may be one side of the body, but it shows up on the other side of the body. Um, and, you know, like the left side of our body is receiving from others and the right side of the body is giving to others. And so very aware of when we work with breast cancer, it's like, okay, are you not receiving love some way? And are you not giving love enough? Are you bracing from that? And so working on what that is and that balance. And then internal non-physical, we think, we think about, okay, what beliefs do I have about you know, myself and others and whether I feel safe, whether I feel the world is safe, um, you know, whether I feel like I deserve God's healing and his blessing and his health. Um, you know, whether I feel accepted or I feel like I need to suffer because I did something wrong and that's just stuck in there that we won't ever get out. Uh, we sometimes have emotions, you know, if we're angry, we're not going to heal very well. Mm -hmm. but we deal with those emotions. We sometimes have like intentions and sometimes those are hard to come up with. And I, I um, pulled my book here because sometimes when I work with a client, you, you kind of get in, I don't want to say an altered state, but you're just like really in the moment and you kind of forget. <laughs> So, um, but like an intention would be, I try to control the future by suffering now. Mm -hmm. And so you think about how many times you have a headache is like, oh, I just don't want to deal with A, B, or C. You know, um, right now I'm finding one of the biggest things I'm dealing with is to ma maintain separation from the divine at all costs. And it's almost like because we've had to separate from others, and we feel that that's unsafe, then we try to separate from the divine also. It's just kind of like a, a mental thing. Um, and then there's a vow. Maybe you, you know, have a vow of like, you know, oh, I can never make money or I shouldn't be a success or I shouldn't um, do better than my parents or, you know, and so we have these vows that we sometimes take on. So we have numerous things that we can test to find out what is the non-physical. Kind of going back to the uh, chronic illness and you know, fibromyalgia, is usually the inability to move forward. So you have to make a move or you have to make a change. I worked with a lady where her son had gone off to Afghanistan and she couldn't do anything to help protect him or take care of him. And so she was stuck. And so the joints and everything were feeling that stuckness. And I think the thing that's just to be aware for people is that a lot of times we find that chronic illness or illness shows up a year and a half to two years later after the situation has happened. So we're kind of, you know, gearing up for saying, okay, we've been through a, a really difficult year. What, how is people going to process this in the next two years and how is it going to manifest itself in disease? So wow. yeah. interesting. Very I didn't realize that. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, Victoria says, I'm geeking out over here. 
And she said, hello, we need to talk. <laughs> I need that on it too. I try not to talk too much, but I get go on a roll. <laughs> well, it's it's so fascinating because you know we can get stuck in labels. You go to the doctor and they tell you you have fibromyalgia, and now you think you're you're screwed for the rest of your life because you have this disease and there's no moving forward. And I just love that we can connect the dots and and realize that there is more out there and there is probably something that has happened in your life that has caused this to happen and it's it's truly a gift in the end it's you know it doesn't feel like it at the time when you discover you have issues and whatever but as you work through them you realize how much of a gift you've been handed mm -hmm. you know and then you get to share that gift with others and and that's the whole reason behind all of us here working together right yeah, one of the most interesting things that we ever practiced as a um, as our practitioners is someone wrote down on a sticky note a disease and they posted it like this and then we muscle test to find out what was the disease they had you think about how many times you label what you have mm. that's your identity and you yeah. that's we try to say no don't don't identify yourself with yeah. that because that is not your reality you mm -hmm. right. have to be your your ticket completely yeah we just sure. all need to, to to put a sticky on us that says awesome the way i am i love it perfect <laughs> yeah awesome the way i am i'm perfect the way i am right because because yes. we truly are every single one of us we are we are perfect the way we are i like that but i need that one yeah <laughs> So is there anything else, Jody, that you would like to share with our audience before we wrap things up? Gosh, I know we touched on so much. Um, I think what's interesting is that I got my start in working with my son because um, he had jaundice and, and, and colic when he, um, I gave birth to him and it was because he had a fungal infection. Um, that I had gifted him during birth. <laughs> and so know a lot about digestive issues and dealing with that. Um, but what I learned is how to work with people that necessarily can't talk back to me. And why is he crying? What's going on? And so not only do we use what we do with, you know, babies and people and stuff like that, but I also use it with animals. And so I love working with dogs, cats, I've healed a fish, <laughs> of <Nice. laughs> uh, but you know, it, it's that, you know, just, we can die, we can dialogue with anybody. And that's why muscle testing is so neat. It's almost like this universal language to find out what's going on. And so I find that really fascinating, you know, to be able to help, you know, even our pets with what we do. And so that's, so that's Jody, awesome. can you show us how you muscle test? Sure. Um, so I use this muscle here. So when I push down on it and it's strong, that means I'm getting a, a true statement. Okay. We usually, um, you know, you see people muscle test, you know, with the arm and that's fine. You know, you have the O-ring test, you know, so we have lots of different ways that you can muscle test. It's just a, a muscle that you can rely on to find out what's going on. Lots of people use like a um, you know, the desk and they raise their finger or they raise their hand. And so, um, and so you, that's, so the, you have to ask yourself a question. So we always say, and I'll use the phone as an example. So I say, I want to be healthy. If we get, right, I'll use my fingers better. I want to be healthy. I want to be sick. And so I can't raise my finger very hard or high because that is a false um, state or it's a true statement that I don't want to be sick. Now it seems a lot of times people say, well, I, why do I want to say I want to be sick? Well, let's say that you have blonde hair, but you actually diet blonde. So if I ask, well, do you have blonde hair? And your body's going to be confused with that. Or if I ask your name, maybe your name is Joe, but you've got your real name is Josephine. And so we found that most people do not want to be sick. And so that helps us really diet dialogue with the body, you know, do we have a good um, connection or you're free to be able to continue testing 
and get true answers. And there's a lot of other things we do to make sure of that with you know, clearing blocks to spiritual attachments and things like that. But so I do, I want to be healthy and then I want to be sick. And when I do that, that muscle collapses. Okay. Then Dawn also has a question that says, could you post a picture of your card in the comments? Oh, sure. To be able to follow the sequence. Okay. Yeah. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And so I think that, oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to ask you, and that was the energy shield. So you've spoken about the energy shield a few times. And so does that, what does that look like for you? I know what it looks like for myself. What does that look like for you? Okay. Um, so what I think about is after I've taken a shower at the end of my shower, I think about putting on my energy shield for the day. And so I think about, I love Wonder Woman, or not Wonder Woman, I love Jamie Summers, but Wonder Woman's easier because it's more of a costume. <laughs> well, however you want to think about it, whether it's Spider-Man, whatever. But I think about putting on the boots, you know, up the legs. And so I kind of just, I reach down, I just drop my, you know, my legs. And then I think about putting, you know, something over the top of my arms. And then I think about reaching back and pulling that suit all the way up. And then I take it right to the top of my upper lip. And then I zip up the front of it and I go to my bottom lip. And I kind of got this from Donna Eden a little bit. She says, yes. okay, you're the only one that can give away your power. So lock it with your own key. Mm -hmm. and you keep it safe. And so that way, and so that's what we do. Now we just have our own then um, code, like the trauma code that we have you tap to, to secure that and, and keep it, you know, good. Um, a lot of times, you know, once you've read a code, a lot of times, like just running your finger down, you know, you can just read the code or you can say release that code and how many times. And so if you have a big day, sometimes you want to release it 10 times. If it's a, you know, you don't have much that going on that day, just a couple times. Um, some things that have helped me is if I know I have to go to a place that is going to be filled with a lot of inhalants or I'm going to be bothered by a lot of stuff, um, I'll kind of like tuck in some inhalant codes in there kind of thing so just whatever kind of work, works for you so that's what that is perfect great awesome. well, i think that we have come to the point in the show where i get to ask you some squirrel shots oh, so cool. jody are you ready for for your squirrel shots today <laughs> Yeah, I think the only thing I'd have to say is I'm not really sure how to post, you know, let's say the inner, uh, the energy shield and the trauma. So um, I might work with you on how to do that. Perfect. No worries Perfect. about that. And we'll also have you post in the comments where people can contact you as uh, well. Okay. Okay. All right. So number one, what's your favorite way to spend your free time? Reading. <laughs> If you could spend a day in someone else's shoes, whose would they be? Oh boy. Um, I am not really sure on that one. Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I would I would think just sometimes learning, you know, people that you admire, um, I would just like to know how their brain works sometimes. And, you know, I just spent a, um, the last year and a half, you know, with um, Dean Graciosi and, and uh, Tony Robbins. And I would love to just be a fly on the wall to see how fast his brain works to like come up with everything he does, you know? And oh, I agree. <laughs> I think that would be a fascinating uh, study. Okay. A dream you have yet to achieve. Hmm. getting enough reading in a day <laughs> <laughs> any weird quirks that you might have oh i am a little ocd i would say and so i love to have well okay i'll back up um as i mentioned before my dad built homes and so we we lived me and my family lived in a home that my dad had built and it was a model home and so every day I never knew if it would be shown by someone that came to the office. So every day before I left, everything had to be in its place. And so I can't get over that. And so it's like no. everything has to be in a certain order. And I'm like, okay, 
you know. So, <laughs> so it's not OCD, it's CDO. So then it's a alphabetical order. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what did you eat for breakfast today? I love protein shakes. And so I make my family a great protein shake every morning and uh, love it. Nice. Okay, finish this statement. Getting older is fabulous. Okay. I always think my son was really always watching um, Lightning McQueen uh, and, you know, the um, car series. And so I love Mater's idea that just says, you know, hey, don't take my dents out. I earned those. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my laughs> so, so I like all my natural wrinkles because <laughs> I'm <they're> good. <laughs> Perfect. What's your favorite sound? Uh, birds. I love bird singing and, and bird calls and oh. greatest strength. Organization. I, I am I'm an organizational queen and um, just feel so happy when everything's organized. <laughs> <laughs> well, that takes care of my next question. Which are you organized or scattered? <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> Quality of life or quantity? I have to say quality. I, I, there's just certain things that I really enjoy. I enjoy visual, auditory with the birds, um, being able to take in time. I mean, I suppose that's kind of quantity, but just having those, those things that enrich you, you know, and like for me, it's definitely visual and definitely auditory. Fantastic. Cindy's mm -hmm. turn for our last question of the evening. If you could climb to the highest mountaintop with every and everyone in the world could hear you, what would you have to say? Well, um, when you first said mountaintop, um, I think of uh, one of my favorite places on earth. I have two of them, but the, the one I like the most is Wengen, Switzerland. Um, and it is this beautiful valley with these huge um, mountains. In fact, I've got pictures everywhere of it in my office. Um, and when you're there, you just feel closer to God. And so I think there's a sense of when you take out all the stuff we've talked about, what we really are getting down to and, and what the essence is, is making you feel safe in today's world and making you feel safe and that the world is safe. And when you get there, then it's like almost like you don't have to have the disease or the issue that you have or the thing you struggle with. And I think when we're working with the client, that's what our base we're getting to at the core, but we're also making sure they have a connection with the divine. And it's however they see it, whether it's God, the divine, the universe, but you need to have that connection. Mm -hmm. So I think that the thing that I'm most passionate about, I'm literally just thinking about this today is where, what's my mission? And it's making sure that someone has that connection so that they don't have anything blocking them from healing. And, and that's truly what I feel like I'm there is to make sure they are work on helping, helping people have that connection. And it takes right. a long time sometimes and other people, they, they get it. But there's something about when, when God walked to the pool of Bethesda and he said, hey, how long have you been here? He says, 35 years. He says, well, how's it working for you? <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> and it's like, and he said, take up your bed and walk. You know, what love state did he put, God put that person in to just make that connection complete? And, and he did. And so there's something there that I, I, I'm hoping that all my clients are on a spiritual walk and clearing whatever's blocking them so that they have that divine connection to heal and to be the best that they can be. Nice. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wonderful. Yes. So th what a what a wonderful way to end our discussion with you here tonight, Jody. We want to thank you so much for being here with us on TTSN and sharing all of your knowledge with our listeners and ourselves. And we want to bless you with all good things that can come your way. And we want to sign off tonight with everybody hoping that you guys all have a great week and we look forward to our listeners being back here next week take care and have a great week everyone thank you i appreciate it all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.